Bianche, Strade Bianche e Crevi Agricolo. Callum points out there are two smooth lines generally where the car tyres have been in front of you and where they use these roads in general. But of course, when the oh, oh, oh crash, crash in the right down the back, three riders oh. down. Oh, another and one, that's in, front, another one in front. there. Left hand side, a yellow jersey's down from Jumbo Visma. Another We've one. got crashes here as well. Yet again, the wind's really affecting things for the second year running. Oh, here we and go. Van der Poel makes his move, 42 kilometres to go. We've not seen him on our screens yet this season, but suddenly he starts to blast off, knowing that his mate from the cyclocross is up the road. He too wants to be part of the park. It's interesting here, I don't know what you chaps think about it, but Bill Bow going in that move there. Oh, oh no, 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 no. That's Betty all gone down. What a shame. Not what we want to see. Now, this is Romain Grégoire, a young man who we've been very excited about. Up there, he's had a bike change, oh. and this is what else happened in that crash a moment ago, I think. Ay, ay, ay. Well, that is Betiol who's down. That's not the sight we want to see. The rider who's with him Sheffield. is from Ineos Grenadiers, and it's Magnus Sheffield. Oh, oh Benito, we are la curva, sono Andrea. Benito, la testa. It's an odd place. It's the new generation in cycling, though, here in 2023, who are taking on the roads of Strade Bianche with Thomas Pidcock. 
having his gap mm. almost reduced to nothing now, Dan. Well, he's very much in sight for these riders, isn't it? They've done a lot of attacking up that climb and over the top. So it's crunch point, really. A look over the shoulder there from Valentin Maduas of Group Armour. Valter, though, continues to do the work. I mean, they've got two riders in this group, Jumbo Visma. Uh, to remind you, Valter has moved over from the French team over to Jumbo Visma this year. And that having those motorbikes and having Tom Peacock in sight is really going to change what's in the heads, I think, of these riders. As soon as you can see the lone rider out front, it gives you hope that the race is not over, that you're fighting for first place still, and you're not starting to fight for second place. It can be difficult, though, can't it? Because it's when it's so close in front of you, you believe that you can get there. But if Tom just keeps doing what he's doing and just commits to that pace still, that playing around in the background, all of a sudden that six seconds can turn into 10 seconds, then 12, 13. And you can see all the riders just watching each other. Tish Benut, Rui Costa playing a dangerous game as Mohoric gets Watch that out. gap. But he got that gap on the corner mm. there. Just a quick glance over his shoulder on the exit of the corner. He saw that gap and he's like, right. In the same, very similar to Dylan Van Baal, isn't he? He just sort of looks over surreptitiously. Oh, I've got a gap. I'm going to continue to press on the pedals, even though it doesn't look like I'm going much faster. He is. Does he need that gap when we get to the famous Via Santa Caterina, though? It's a long-ish climb with very steep gradients. It's difficult to say at this point in the race, because this climbs are so steep, it is literally all what's about in your legs. We can say what suits a rider, mm. what doesn't suit a rider, but ultimately at this point in the race on these gradients, it's just what power you've got left in your legs. It's not about how light you are or anything like that. It's literally down to what you have left in your legs. And Big Cut looks to have extended that gap a little bit, not quite in sight yet, just around the corner now. We are heading to beautiful old Siena, by the way, perched upon the Benut, hilltop Benut. now. Benot's made his move. I was just wondering what on earth he was doing sitting on the back there. You can see again, there's a reason to everything that he does. Yeah, there is a reason to everything that he does, and he needs to do it cleverly as well, because Tis, as we said, he's not got the biggest acceleration, but he's got a long, high-power acceleration. Walter again, yep, 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 it's time to go. He's looking round. He's got good legs, so it can't have been an easy thing for him to cope with. He's making himself look every bit the favourite that people should be talking up, though. Here. Oh, he is. It's been a, whatever happens from here on in, it's been an absolutely incredible ride by Tom Pidcock. Uh, but as we said earlier on in this broadcast, it's not just the expectations externally on Tom Pidcock. He has his own internal expectations. He expects himself to be up there with the best riders in the world and beating the best riders in the world. It's just that so far on the road, it's only happened on three occasions. You know, his third pro win came just a few weeks ago in a stage of the world to Algarve. He was disappointed in his ride this time last week, despite getting fifth at Omloop, but this is who he thinks he should be on the road. Dan, your prediction is playing out. The gap goes up to 25 here. They cannot agree. They cannot decide. Nobody wants to take the full responsibility of chasing things back. And then having nothing left for Via Santa Caterina. Mohoric will try and use his own descending skills here. You can understand if it's a group of riders who are all in the same or all in different teams but you've got two riders in there on the same team who have not combined just as the team did fantastically well last week to bring it back we saw a little glimpse of Fonda Paul and company there and as we come to the bottom here in this u-turn uh, that Dan was talking about the gap is almost 30 seconds yeah, Mohoric doing the right thing, going to the front there to try and use his skills to keep the gap at least where it is, if not bring it down. It's still hovering at the 26 second mark. But I think these riders are all looking at each other now, aren't they, visibly? They're just starting to think of whether they're going to get a place on the podium as, to, as opposed to whether or not they're going to take the win today. Ticks up by another second. And Pickup will have those time gaps in his ear from the sports directors behind. He probably would have looked around at some point and seen how close they were on that previous tarmac climb. And there would have been a thought going through his head, I might well get caught here if they're that close now. But really, he's never put a foot wrong. He's concentrated from the moment that he went to going as fast as he possibly could over the distance towards the finish here in Siena. And as things stand right now, looks like it's going to pay off for him. Well, he's coming up to... Via Santa Caterina, a launch pad that's launched more successful missions than Cape Canaveral in the last few years. <laughs> but 
it looks as though there's going to be no contest behind unless there's a major change in what's going to happen in this race. It's almost half a minute. One single second shy of that number. Behind still, there's no full committal. The gap will grow if this carries on. Only now do we see the move from Attila Falter. But it needs something superhuman in the final kilometre to really chase this back from Pitcock. It would need something superhuman, yeah, because the rest of them are all following Attila Valter. And so as soon as he looks around, I think, and sees that he hasn't got any gap over the group that he's in, he'll probably sit up again and leave things to Tisha Benoit for the final climb up towards the finish. Here we go, then. It's a sight for sore eyes if you've been out there fighting it out on the dirt, dusty roads of Tuscany. Tom Pitcock goes on to the one kilometer to go banner alone and with a gap that totals 28 seconds to Mohoric, Kosta, Madwas, Benoit and Walter. The last two being teammates who've had a bit of a visible falling out on the run in. Jombo Visma played it perfectly both days last weekend, but unless something changes dramatically as they come to the paving stones of Via Santa Caterina, it will be Ineos Grenadiers who are going to take this classic. It'll be, Tim P It'll be Tom Pidcock to take victory here. They queue left and right, several deep. Pidcock will come into this little left turn. The road is about to ramp up. The gradients will be hellish for one final time. But Tom Pidcock has his own appointment with history in this modern classic. He's turned up on time. He increases his lead, 32 seconds. And as this stands, it's almost a procession to victory in a square famous for the things. Piazza del Campo awaits. Pidcock has come from the cross field where he missed the World Championships to prepare for the classic season, to starting to boss things on the road. He wanted to be on form from opening weekend all the way to Liège. It's just the second weekend of the Classics, and he's riding away to victory. Four and a half hours against the very best in the world. On a perfect parkour. Picturesque, but also punishing. Tom Pidcock has done it, Dan. He has, and he took a glance over his shoulder, one of the only glances over his shoulder he's done for quite some time, and he would have seen that there was a big, big gap if he even could see any of that group behind. So I just hope that he can soak up this atmosphere now and take in what he has just achieved here today. How many races finish in a place as special as Piazza del Campo in Siena? How many bike riders come through to punish the rest of the field just like Tom Pidcock. Pidcock has played it perfectly. The first British man to conquer the white roads of Tuscany and take home the winner's medal. Ready to step onto the podium in a modern classic. It's the next generation led by Tom Pidcock. Pidcock wins Strade Bianchi and he does it in some style. Behind they fight for podium positions. Groupama FTG rode valiantly throughout the day, and it's going to be Valentin Madouas who'll take it. And the former winner, Tish Benoit, will have a bit of an inquest. He's third on the podium again. Honestly, it's going to take some, uh, some sinking in. And, and uh, when I went, you know, that was completely not the plan. Um, obviously, that sector is normally the decisive place, so I was just kind of, yeah, just riding... Uh, Hard. I got a gap on the descent. I just carried on, and uh, well, honestly, this week I had the the feeling. I had a, a good feeling. I knew something good was going to happen today. Um, I, I kind of knew today was my day, and uh, that it actually paid off is uh, pretty incredible. Honestly, I don't I don't even know what to uh, think right now. Were you aware that uh, the chasers were less than 10 seconds behind? Yeah, I, a few times. They they um, they came close, and I thought, oh, I've messed it up. I've I've gone too early. I've uh, yeah wasted my my shot here. But uh, the thing is, in uh, yeah races like this, it, the day was so fast all day, and I thought, you know, if I get a gap and I keep going, it's uh, yeah it's, it's hard to bring back. Um, yeah. 
honestly, in a lot of races recently, there's been a lot of motorbikes in front of the guys in front, but today I didn't have many motorbikes, so uh, I was hoping for a few more. Well done, done. Thank you. Thank you. A big moment then. Remember, the riders were told backstage to be careful of the cork. Time to celebrate for Pitcock, Madwas, and Benoit. Pitcock victorious. But there's more racing coming up at Italy as well. Madwas and Benoit on the podium. Let's go here.